Um, I spent a good bit of my childhood in Woodbrook on Alfredo Street. So every carnival, my dad would walk past in his costume and... Hey guys, welcome, welcome to Mike Only Mike. Uh, I know you see me a little sweaty, catch my bit workout, but you know, during the pandemic times, you have to keep yourself healthy. I reach out to my boy Nick here. He has great news and I want him to tell it for yourself to the audience here on Mike Only Mike. Nick, what's happening today? Yeah, well, t- today, um, live on Google, mm-hmm. was the Google Doodle that, we, that we've been working on for roughly the last two years, mm-hmm. finally went live. And it's an interesting project because I see that you're celebrating Pan. Why, why that topic or why that particular co- topic? Did Google reach out to you or did you decide the project? How, how was the, the negotiation for that? Yeah, Google actually reached out to me on Instagram in about, I think, June 2020. Um, the idea that they presented was to do a static image of the Google, this typical Google in the style of steel pan. Um, but after some more conversations, we decided it would probably be most effective to do a full, a full length animation that could actually showcase the music as well. So because of that, that's why the project actually took a bit longer than the original expected timing. Mm-hmm. Um, because we obviously, we worked with an animator, a guy by the name of Mixi Gobin. And then of course we brought on the extremely talented musical team of Etienne Charles and Len Bugsy Sharp. How did the pandemic affect this particular project? Yeah, so the, it was actually supposed to be released a year ago, um, but Trinidad was kind of in the midst of a lockdown. Um, so it wasn't really the best timing. So because of that, we the decision was was made to postpone it by an extra year. And I know everyone excited because it, it, it's, it's reaching a wider global audience. But just for those at home here, how how did you get that that um, passion for carnival and for pan music and, and for what makes you Trinidadian? Where did that passion come from and how can we nurture it for the youngsters moving forward who want to continue that particular message? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just like experience i think you really have to have to experience it to really come to love it um i spent a good bit of my childhood in woodbrook on alfredo street so every carnival my dad would walk past in his costume and take me down to Arpita avenue or whatever the case is and i mean it like those are very vivid memories in my mind i also went to um, bishop Ansley junior school in saint anne's and there's a real cultivation of the carnival spirit at that school, I think. Um, so, of course, like doing the, the yearly jump up and dressing up as a blue devil. And um, of course, uh, Isaac Rudder was a year above me. So we used to get David Rudder every year to come and perform in the yard. So I think between those two things, I would say that really kind of cultivated early on in, in me uh, a love of carnival and a love of the culture as well. And guys, I know you see me sweating plenty. Yeah? Catch me with mid workout. Is the pandemic time? You have to take care of yourself. So, but as as it's hot, I want to get to get Nicholas and we or I already have this relationship. So I, I reached out to him. And for the parents out there, you didn't take the traditional part of the doctor and the lawyer. What is your advice for the parents and for the kids? Because in during the pandemic, we see that there are new budding industries in Trinidad and Tobago. And yes, we have the whole <coughs> infrastructure, but how do we embrace this new digital space that allows for opportunity like this for the wider public? Yeah, I mean, I think it's important to note that the world is changing. The world is always changing. I'm sure 20 years ago, no one would think like a social media manager would be a job. People didn't know what social media was 20 years ago. So I think it's really just to kind of try to be on the on the cutting edge, be on the forefront of whatever is the new technology. Um, I mean, there's, once you could figure out something to do that people need, um, there's always a way to make a living doing it, you know, whether that's whether that's art, whether that's being a doctor, whatever the case is, once, I think once you could enjoy what you do to some degree, obviously you're not gonna enjoy every single day, no matter what you're doing. But I think once you could have a like above average enjoyment level of your yeah. profession and you just figure out something that people need, I think, you know, you could really and truly do, do anything. And of course, always trying to be on that cutting edge, which I know um, the, younger, the younger generation definitely they are on that cutting edge, you know, with TikTok and um, all these different um, like NFTs and Web3 and all these different things. Like, I think that is something where we're seeing people in their their twenties and even in their teens really excelling. And and you have a particular style. So we're talking directly to the artists. How do you define your style 
and and how has that been marketable and has been opening these opportunities for you in terms of what is your style i mean i don't necessarily know what my style is maybe like if it had to be defined maybe like a mix of um like pop art or digital art or whatever the case is but mm -hmm. um something that i find to be very important is to always be experimenting um and I'm sure you can look at a lot of the work that I do, and I, I do put out a, a high quantity of work. But I mean, for instance, when I put when we do something for Kess and people see that stylistically, that's different to like, for instance, this job or the job that I did recently for McDonald's or for Johnny Walker. Like when you look at it stylistically side by side, they are different styles. But I think that what binds them all together is that it, they all showcase the culture of Trinidad and Tobago. And I think that that's kind of more what people have come to appreciate my work for, rather than necessarily one style in particular. This particular Google Doodle, what took, 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 what, I, what stood out for me was the, the retro vibe and the retro feel. Was that an artistic decision? And how, how did you determine that vibe and that feel? Because to me, it was like, yeah, you place me through animation in that 1950s era. How did you do that? Yeah, I mean, it was just, once again, stylistic choices. Of course, when you're researching a project like this, you're looking at a lot of um, references, a lot of film reference, a lot of old photos. Um, there's a great book uh, on the history of Steel Pan by a guy named Kim Johnson, who also made a mm -hmm. film on Steel Pan. And of course, these were different things and different elements that I looked at. Um, so I kind of wanted to maintain that sort of sepia, sepia tone and that monochromatic feel to really um, put the viewer into, into that feeling of this is a historical sort of monumental thing. This isn't just something that came about today. This is something that was invented many, many, many years ago, you know, and I really wanted to give that sort of historical feel. Also to like, we wanted to highlight the actual um, tuners and the people who actually make the steel pan as well mm -hmm. as the players, because there is a, there is a, a huge ecosystem of steel pan that is very um, necessary to one another. What was the stylistic decisions that you say probably that's what was the secret to the success or the secret, secret sauce? Yeah, I mean, I think it was a culmination of a lot of things. You know, it was the fact that Etienne and Bugsy composed a, a song specifically for this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it definitely, like the music obviously plays a huge part in i think the success of this piece um of course i mean i i just i just hope that it was something that people could sort of relate to and something that felt authentic to trinidad and tobago and authentic to the steel pan so perhaps just because that was what my intention was maybe that people are kind of relating to it in that way as well you know and what are your words of advice for the trinidadians out there who say you know the culture dying we don't receive, we don't understand the carnival. What was your words of advice in terms of protecting that heritage? Because obviously you went back in time and globally, it's this this particular campaign, in my opinion, on Mike Only Mike, it's been very successful. What are your words of advice for them? I mean, I think that something that is necessary is to actually take action. So whether whether that's going out and supporting things like Kambule or, or supporting things like stick fighting or supporting things like Pan. There are, there are all these cultural elements and sort of cultural ambassadors who are in the space and who are doing a lot of work. And I think people maybe take that for granted and they say, oh, well, you know, like this isn't well supported, but it's, it's up to the people to go out and support these various things because they all, they all are still happening. So it's really important that we go out, we show support, either through just being in attendance or through monetary support or through artistic support or whatever the case is. I think that all these things still exist. So it really is just a matter of the people instead of instead of being like, oh, the culture is dying, go out there. And, and if, if that is your if that is your thought, go out there mm -hmm. and try to change it, do something about it. Um, and that can be done in, in a smaller way as simply showing up to an event. And my final, final thoughts, I have two, but the first one is we've seen the pandemic, things have been, been actually been, been, we have some relaxed situations now and we have all these carnival events. What are you looking forward for Carnival 2023? I mean, really and truly, I'm just looking forward to, to being on the road and being amongst the people, if that, if that makes sense, you know, like um, 
last year I happened to be in Miami over Miami Carnival visiting mm-hmm. some family and I didn't even really take into consideration that Miami Carnival was happening but of course once I realized it dates real line I, I went to um I went to a fet um on one of the nights and I mean that was my first fet in in two years re- re- really you know and I mean mm-hmm. just being around people here hearing people like David Rudder and Kess and Marshall Montano and the speaker I mean it was really um it was really an experience and and I think I made a comment saying something like um like you know car- carnival is like the the joining religion of the people in a way you yeah. know um, vibration, so think, yeah. yeah it is something that is that runs through all of us you know and just being around people and carnival is such an experiential thing it's not something like steel pan is always going to be better in a pan yard or at panorama than it will be on a recording on youtube or whatever the case is right so i think it's important to to know that and i think that's kind of what i'm looking forward to most and as an artist i want to say thank you thank you for your work thank you for your human service you definitely have captured the vibe in this particular project and the other projects of the past because i i know you from when you're doing the carnival boots we did that interview and actually helped paint a carnival boot so that was very course, interesting yeah. to see and get a hands-on experience but as i said i have final final questions here on mike on the mic and i see my time is running out um i want to end with the budding young entrepreneurs or the budding young graphic artists in this particular space and i wanted us to hit home to the parents and the kids what are your words of advice as being a successful graphic artist i know there are many challenges but what was that factor that help you overcome your challenges yeah i would say i would say the most important thing is just uh, to work hard because at the end of the day something like this where google reaches out to you that's not something that happens overnight you know um as as you know i've been doing work consistently for the last 10 15 years yeah. really putting in the hours mm-hmm. um i was able to to build up my my instagram through just posting illustrations every day and you know it took me maybe 150 pieces of work before i was ever even hired to do my first job that was an illustration job you know and just i think right now i've posted maybe like over a thousand things on instagram which are all each one is a unique artwork you know so Mm -hmm. that's obviously a lot a lot a lot a lot of time that has gone into that so i'd say if you're young and you want to start doing this don't expect any sort of overnight success because there is while you see successful people and you might see the, the tip of the iceberg there's still a lot of work that builds that foundation for for whatever success comes you got it here right right there on my on mic hot off the press thank you nicholas thank you for agreeing um as i got the opportunity as you see a boy didn't stick eh? Middle yeah, workout, yeah, yeah. nah, nah, nah. Workout. <laughs> I, Half, I, do not push up on your. Like, I was like, what? Yeah, yeah, nah. Let yeah. me go through hard. And that's just what the digital space allows. It allows you to be very effective, very efficient, and to help us build that community. And on that note, if you enjoy the video, if you enjoy the comments, if you enjoy anything that this video can inspire somebody who in this particular space, make sure share, make sure comment, and you could reach out, man. Thanks, yeah, thanks def- Nick, once again. Definitely. Cool. Thanks a lot, Mike. If, if for the audience who want to continue and or maybe want to support you, where they can go to find your digital channels? They can find me on um, on Instagram. It's at Nicholas Huggins Creative or t- uh, Twitter at Nick underscore Huggins underscore. My name was already t- 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 taken, so I had, to, I had to come up with something else. But yeah, Instagram, most likely I try to, I try to respond to, to most DMs or whatever. So yeah. Thank you, guys. Thank you for helping us build this community. Thanks, Nick. Thanks Thanks for taking the time. See you.